The next type of problem that we're going to talk about is what happens whenever we see continuously compounded interest. Now we've dealt before with just regular compounded interest and it always had some sort of a time frame. You know, um, compounded quarterly or compounded annually or something to that effect. When we talk about continuously compounded interest, we're talking about literally every minute of every hour of every day of every year month of every year it just goes all you know on and on and on all right so we have a new formula that we have to talk about with continuously compounded interest and you're going to know that you're dealing with continuously compounded interest because it has to say that specifically it has to say compounded continuously in our problem when we see that we're going to be using this new formula and that is a equals p e raised to the RT power. Now we have to know what each one of these variables are again before we can begin. The variables do not change at all. It doesn't matter whether you're working with um, compound interest or continuously compounded interest. The variables mean the exact same thing. A is your amount after time. P is your principal or your starting amount. R is the interest rate, always written in decimal form and t is your time in years. In this case, even though it looks like e is a variable, remember e is that number 2.718 on and on and on forever. So let's see how we would work this. This says that we want to get $1,000 after one year at 12% compounded continuously. So here's our key word that we're going to be using our a equals p e to the r t formula. Okay, so if we want to get a thousand dollars, and I'm going to go ahead and list out my variables over here to the side. If I want to get a thousand dollars, that's my amount after time. After one year, well that's our time frame, at 12 percent, so that's our interest rate, but I have to write it in decimal form so that would be 0.12. The principle here is what we're looking for. We want to know how much do we have to invest now in order to get this amount in a year's time. So now we can plug everything into our formula. So 1000 in place of A will equal P E to the R which is 0.12 times T which is 1 power. Now simplifying as we go that would be 1000 equals P E to the 0.12 times 1 is 0.12 and now to get P alone we'd have to divide both sides by E so that would be 1000 divided by E to the 0.12 equals P. Now of course if you say this to somebody you say well if you need a thousand dollars you're going to have to invest a thousand divided by E to the 0.12 power they're going to look at you like you're crazy so at this point we need to go ahead and put it in our calculator and figure out what that number actually is. So in our calculator we're going to do 1000 uh -oh, let's see if I can get my mouse to work better there no I cannot let's see if I can move that up just a hair there we go 1000 sorry about that divided by and then we have e raised to the 0.12 power. So now rounded to two decimal places, that looks like that's going to be $886.92. So this is the amount of money we would need now in order to be able to have $1,000 in a year's time.